I'm going to show you a bunch of helpful tips and tricks for Call to the Lamb. In case you were having trouble with the game or just wanted to have it be easier. The first tip that I have for you is when you go into here, uh, when you beat the first boss, the main boss of the game, you'll get an item where you can go to your crown and upgrade one of these crown perks. Now, the most important thing to upgrade is this one, Omnipresence. So it lets you hold a button in order to escape a dungeon whenever you want. And this will let you abuse a game mechanic that will make the whole game significantly easier. So what this will let you do is pick your weapon whenever you want. So say you go into one of these dungeons and you always, if you've ever played this game before, you get a random weapon and a random curse at the beginning. So if you go in here and it's a really low level one or one that you don't want to use or you don't like, then just hold the button to escape. So on the bottom right of the screen, you can see it. I'm using a controller, it's Y for me, but it'll tell you what button depending on if you're using keyboard or if you're on a switch or if you're on whatever, you know. And hold that button until you escape. And then as soon as you load in, uh, the longest part of doing this is just gonna be load times, but about every 20, probably 30 seconds, you can reset on average. So then you'll do that and you'll immediately roll your way back exactly where you were. And you just do this over and over and over again until you get a really good starting weapon. Now me personally, I think the best weapons in the game, since it's a melee game, are the hammers. Anything that's really slow, because then you can focus on dodging and just come in for one big hit and then just get out. But you know, if you have some weapon that you prefer, you can just do this until you get your favorite weapon. Or you can do this until you get a specific weapon with a specific trait. The next tip I want to give is that whenever you give sermons here, it, what it does is it uses your followers to give you XP basically and the level of your followers determines how many points it gives you for each follower uh, And this is how you like level up in the game But there's a reason I'm telling you this an actual tip about this So you'll probably figure this out pretty fast the game forces you to do it But every time that you level up you can level these up But what I'm really here to tell you is that this is totally overpowered So what you want to do is focus on getting up this side of the tree first And you'll have some left over to get a few of the ones over here on the way Because it unlocks in like tiers like this uh, but get Zealous Weapons. Zealous Weapons makes it so that your Collected Fervor gets uh, turned into Divine Inspiration when you are using one of these weapons. And they're totally OP, and you can combo that with that weapon trick I just showed you in order to no matter what, get a Zealous Weapon when going through a dungeon or whatever they're called. And that will allow you to get, like, depending on what dungeon you're doing, anywhere from like 100 to 300 Divine Inspiration every single run which is just like in the early to mid game, totally OP. So if you, I would get this as soon as you can, and then don't even get the ones afterwards until you farm some divine inspiration and got like most of it leveled up and don't really care anymore. Then start going and get merciless weapon because getting these other ones will just make it that much less likely that you get the RNG spawn of the zealous weapon. It's already bad enough. It's like one out of eight or something like that times of going in to get one. And it'll only get worse if you get merciless and godly weapons. So just get zealous, don't get the next ones until you're satisfied with your divine inspiration farming. The next thing I'm gonna give you is, I don't know, more of a practicality thing. So you'll learn through the tutorials, when you talk to one of your followers, you can do this, it turns into inspire later on. And doing this to your followers once a day will increase their loyalty. If their loyalty goes up, they level up. And then you can see that in your cult and you go to your followers, you can see what level they are. This guy's level four, this guy's level two, and so doing that will make them give you more XP whenever you give a sermon. And if you want to micromanage it, you can. An early game, I guess, go ahead and do it. It's probably good to do early game. But to be honest, like at mid game to late game, it's better just to get mass amounts of followers because you'll get stuff where basically food takes care of itself. You can just get like 30 of these things. You have all the beds put down. Like it doesn't really matter anymore. So. Even though, yes, you, it's like what it, you know, theoretically you should be doing that every day. It takes so long to track down 20 of these guys and do it to each one. It's just not worth the effort to do it. And I would rather just get like more followers and just get one or two or three from each one and just call it a day, basically. So that's like a, ge a general practical advice I want to give. Another thing I want to tell you if you haven't gone through the mid game, you haven't figured this out yourself, uh, don't place farms side by side. So you see, I have this farm, you see the outline. And then you have this one, which is also, well, there's a second outline, so look at the scarecrow, there we go. Uh, this one's also, but like, right up against this other one, and the plots are right up against it. Really, the plots are the big issue. I mean, these are just makes so the, the villager, or the uh, followers will take care of it for you, but the main thing is don't put these plots like this. Leave open space, because you need scarecrows later on to get, get rid of birds. You need fertilizer, you need seed, like these different seed things. Make sure that each one of these has room for a two, uh, two by two for one of these seed boxes. Uh, or else you're gonna have a headache later on trying to deal with it later Like I had to jam a scarecrow over here instead of just putting one in the middle and just cover most of the farms and things because I didn't realize 
that I should leave one row open at least between each of these those so definitely keep that in mind when placing fires before you realize that's a thing that's a thing so just be aware of that that'll help a lot another tip is that you want to always keep an eye on your lumber and your stone it's like the backbone of this game so you'll be able to pretty early on you'll be able to get I can show you on here are the upgrades there's an upgrade over here to get stone mine and lumber yard and what this will do is it will let you make a stone mine or a lumber yard for 10 of the material that you need and then 30 coins so stone 10 stone and then 30 coins and you want to keep up on this or else you'll have to go into a dungeon and specifically look for stone or lumber to get caught up again because there's not enough of it like they don't really respawn trees grow back a little bit on your farm here and there but not at a speed that's practical at all so make sure that you always have a bunch of these going at all times. If you start to run low, build more before spending your materials. So that way there's always places for them to collect these materials or else it just, it really sucks. Another tip that I want to give is once you get to the mid game, when you see your followers walk up to you and want like a quest, unless I'm missing something obvious, it's better just to ignore them and don't talk to them because sometimes it's not bad. Sometimes you have one like this and it's, Whatever, you know, do glory of construction ritual, that's fine. Uh, but other ones will be like, okay, once you do a ritual you don't want to do, or once you go farm a mat that you don't have, like 10 mushrooms or something, and it's not really worth the effort for like not getting, like one follower gets a little bit of loyalty. Once you get out of the early game, it's not worth it at all. It's not worth the time. It's just <laughs> flat out not worth it one damn bit so keep that in mind just ignore them once you get to the mid game or else it's just a you know you're just gonna lose time and effort and it's just a waste while i'm here doing a ritual i should give you a really important tip about rituals so managing rituals is a really important part of this game especially i'm assuming on harder difficulties too uh where it's better to have a ritual available and not use it than to need it and not have it what i mean by that is like the most basic one of all the bonfire it literally just gives a boost of faith to your followers and it's like there's no point in doing it unless you're actually in trouble and you need it. And so like a lot of these, I just save them unless I have a reason. Like this one's a sacrifice one you'll unlock later on, which I'll talk about in a second, but you'll unlock one like this. Uh, and maybe I'll do this one just cause I have a follower. I don't feel like dealing with one of his problems and I'll just get, use this as an excuse to get rid of him. But nine out of 10 times, it's like, I just save them until I need them other than certain ones, like ones that will, this one increases loyalty that you get later on and one that just makes all your farm plots instantly grow like maybe i'll just do these randomly but anyone that gives faith don't don't even bother unless you actually need it or you are going to regret it if you do need it also at some point you'll be led into doing this using the commandment stones and you'll be able to go through all these now each one will let you pick two different things but there's one in particular that you might want to get first in my opinion the first one to get is under law and order it'll be your first choice and there's this one called ascend follower ritual and it is so op because it gives all your followers loyalty and once you hit the mid game especially once you hit the mid game and you don't feel like micromanaging the whole blessing your followers every two seconds to try to level them up instead you can just do this once every two or three days or whatever and they'll all get a massive boost in loyalty so it's just like an easier macro strategy to keep up with them without having to micromanage every little detail and also followers get old in this game and then die naturally anyway so you have one that's old all the time at a certain point in the game so whenever they're old just pick one someone who's gonna about to die anyway and then do this ritual on him and then just everyone gets loyalty it's, it's a really good one there's lots of good ones in here but there's no reason to rush one over the other other than this one because they all have their pros and cons i wouldn't worry too much about it just level up whatever and find it out find out for yourself honestly another tip i want to give is that graves are totally op so as soon as you get an option to make a grave you are gonna want to do that which then takes you back to doctrines it is a level four doctrine so like if you want to rush for it, go ahead. It's not crucial, but it is nice to have because when people are dead, if you make a grave for them, then your people randomly go visit those graves and that gives them to faith or loyalty. I think it was faith. I can't remember. Uh, but either way, it's just a nice bonus that just happens all the time for free. And so just like free extra stuff without having to do anything at all. So that, that's a nice one to have. So if you've played this game for more than 10 minutes, you're familiar with this, the divine inspiration tree. Okay. So what's most important in this? I'm going to tell you the most important thing. So one of the most important things farming bundle what this does is lets your followers water and take care of the crops and then you just put down a, se a seed silo near this and just fill the seed silo they'll do it but you still have to harvest so 
that'll like save you a ton of effort in order to keep your followers fed and not have to like go forward for every two seconds for them and stuff. You just go and just go through a little bit of hassle, harvest everything, you're good. Then later on, way later on, like, you know, tier almost the end of the game, tier four, uh, you'll get the farmer station two. And once you get this, it's like, oh my gosh, no more micro ever. Because then they'll also harvest the crop. So all you have to do is just go over and put seeds back in the seed silo and collect the chest and just move on. You don't have to sit there and, oh my gosh, harvesting like three farmer stations worth of crops takes like five minutes or something. It's terrible. So uh, this is like lifesaver. If you can get, get that as soon as you possibly, as soon as you unlock tier four, that was the first thing I got. Super important thing to get. Also, Scarecrow is huge because otherwise you'll eventually run out of seeds if you're not constantly getting more and you can easily get enough seeds, but it's just not in the early to mid game. It's just annoying if you don't get enough seeds because every bush that gets eaten means you lose a seed and the seeds it's like i get make a bush with a seed for example i get one seed back it's like a continuous cycle where you don't gain or lose seed so that kind of screws that up and then uh, again the lumberyard stone mine are absolutely critical to get early as well so that you don't have to constantly go out and forage for those and then the other thing that you're really gonna want is gonna be the outhouse because Otherwise, you have to constantly clean up poop, and it's super annoying and time-consuming after a while. And then after that, the janitor station and the healing bay, all three of these are really important. Uh, healing bay is kind of important because they get sick. It'll make them get better faster. And the janitor station is nice because with the janitor station, you can assign one or two people to a janitor station, and then they'll clean up the poop and the vomit and all that stuff for you if you don't feel like dealing with it. So like mid to late game, absolutely critical to have this to not have to deal with it. And then also the Shrine Flame Bundle lets you throw down some grass in front of the altar and everyone just makes Divine Inspiration faster. It's a really good one. And then uh, Cheaper Rituals makes Rituals half as expensive. This one makes them cool down, uh, take twice or half as long to cool down. Those are also really big. So those are like the biggest ones. These other things are nice. Like this is kind of nice and this is kind of nice, but they're not even close to as important as these other ones. These other ones are absolutely critical. Uh, and then Refinery, you'll be forced into getting it. Uh, and refinery two is not really that important at all, but refinery one you'll have to be use it to build some of these later things But but yeah, so those are the most important ones. Hopefully that helps you out Another really important tip is this thing will appear in your base once you get far enough in the game I think they're beating the second dungeon or something like that somewhere in, around there and the the basically the devil will Tell you about this. Maybe it's after the first area, but pretty early on in the game You'll get this it'll just appear in here eventually and you can sell things in here in order to get coins now The more you sell the less it's worth but the main thing I do here is I just sell excess bones because I usually end up with like an insane amount. So like I had 800 earlier, I sold it down to like 500. Now I've done some rituals, I'm down to like 300, but I end up with a ton of those. I end up with a ton of these flowers. So I'm selling some of these, you know, it's like the coins are not an issue in this game once you get this. Just use it uh, and just sell random stuff to it whenever you have too much of something that you don't need like bones. And you'll doesn't matter have enough points for anything. Or if you're like, okay, you want to build something you're a little bit short, you just go over to it, sell some bones. Okay, or whatever it is that you have an insane amount of. Really useful. Don't sleep on that. That's super, super helpful in order to keep up with your little cult town. So pretty early on in the game as well, after the first or second dungeon, this guy will appear here. You can buy a follower from him whenever you want for 50 coins. Uh, not whenever you want. You have to go do a dungeon to make him respawn. And then there's this guy, and you can buy seeds here, and you can buy beetroot and cauliflower seeds, which you can combine with pumpkins to make really fancy meals that increase follower loyalty. So those are nice things to be aware of if you didn't notice those guys. Uh, they're really helpful. The last tips I have for you are some combat-related tips. So let me just go ahead and grab a weapon real fast. Grab this. Um, so something really important in this game is weapons have combos that end. This one is a really weak combo, but some some weapons have like a powerful finisher attack at the end. And uh, there's a few like there's like an exploit first off. So uh, you can't really see it with this one, but if you get to the third one in the chain and then you roll and then just spam it, which doesn't it literally doesn't even work for this one. Or maybe it does. Let me try it. Yeah. So like you can kind of see it there. You see how it does that down slash at the end. Uh, so down slash and then roll a slant and attack and just if you do it in the right pattern you can just do the heavy attack forever and with slower weapons it's super easy to abuse if there's like if the final attack in the chain is really slow you can literally just do that forever and do the powerful final hit for a chain as many times as you want uh well it's also really hard to use so don't don't bank on that unless you practice it a ton and get really good at it now, the other tip that I have for combat that's really important to know about if you were not aware is you can roll cancel by attacking. So when you roll, you go this crazy distance, but at any point in the roll, you can take a swing. And so you can do that in order to abuse the distance on an enemy and stay right on their face. So let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about here. 
So you can just like stay on them by roll canceling. And it's super helpful to stay in a good position and also be able to stay right on top of an enemy at the same time. So if an enemy, especially when enemies get bounced away really far, uh, it's really helpful to roll cancel. Be aware roll canceling is a thing. It's it's insanely useful for combat. It, it it makes the whole combat 10 times easier. Last thing is tarot cards. I mean, it's not really much. I mean, honestly, you should probably just grab them all and say, screw it, it's just a video game. But if you do get a card that's really OP for something you want, then it's probably a good idea to not do anything in the game that would ever give you brand new tarot cards to use. So for example, there's one in here where I can increase, it doubles the amount of fervor. Here we go. Uh, enemies will drop two times more fervor. So if I combo that with that other weapon I showed you earlier that will make my fervor give me divine inspiration, if I happen to get that early on in a run, then I can farm like three to 400 divine inspiration in one run through a dungeon, which is totally OP in the mid, early to mid game. And so in that situation, if you get that card, then you don't really want to get other cards until you're done farming Divine Inspiration, because the more cards you have, the less likely you are to draw that card. So it's, you don't have to. It's like that's really min-maxing to a point that's not like super necessary, but it's definitely an option. So if you want to go that far, that's definitely something you could do that actually would help a lot. And that's about it. That's all the tips and tricks that I have for you. Everything else in this game doesn't really matter too much. Nothing that I can think of in particular. It's just like heavy weapons are OP, farming divine inspiration, the farms, like everything that I mentioned in this video is the most important things that you should know about or focus on in this game. So hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully these tips and tricks make your game a little bit easier, a little bit more fun to play.